What's going on guys? Welcome back to HVAC Tool Review. The last few videos we've talked about tools that I would recommend buying and today we're going to talk about a tool that I've used that I would not recommend purchasing. Backrack Informant 2 Electronic Leak Detector. So this leak detector comes in this nice hard case. That is the detector there. It includes the blue tip with the refrigerant sensor, the red tip with the included red tip for combustion gas sensor. So this tool is supposedly able to reliably locate leaks on both refrigerant gases and combustion gases. And I have not found that to be quite accurate for, for what I've used it for. So going through the manual, the manual states that this is able to detect refrigerants, all, H, all CFCs, HCFCs, and HFCs. The response time is 0.2 seconds and the sensitivity that they claim is a leak rate of half an ounce a year of 134A, which is supposedly the hardest refrigerant to locate for an electronic leak detector. And I've not found that to be the case at all. With 134A, I've rarely been able to get this thing to hit off of 134A on leaks that I've been able to find with soap bubbles or big blue, something like that. And 410A has been pretty similar there. I have really had no luck locating leaks with 410A. And then R22 has been a little bit better. I don't think I've actually tried this on like on the 407s, so I can't I can't comment there, but the three refrigerants that I've really used it on is 134A, 410A, and 22. Even with R22, there's been times where I've located leaks using alternate methods and I wasn't able to pinpoint it with this electronic leak detector. So yeah, the half an ounce Half an ounce a year claim. I don't think that's accurate. Uh, the combustion gases, supposedly it's able to locate down to 50 parts per million of methane is the minimum. And I've actually had pretty good luck using this for, for gas leaks, for combustion gas. So if you were gonna purchase this solely on locating combustion gases, I wouldn't say that this is a bad tool. If I've got to locate a gas leak, I'll, I'll grab this and that's why it, it stayed on the truck so far. So yeah, it includes both sensors. You've got the red sensor for combustion gases. You've got the blue sensor that I've already got installed on the unit here for refrigerants. And then you've got the correlating tips that are interchangeable for depending on the type of gas that you're looking for. So when you pull this out and turn it on, This thing, uh, so the battery compartment is back here. You've got to pull this rubber housing off of the back. This whole back end comes out with a little Phillips head and it uses four AA batteries. So once you turn it on, uh, you're supposed to let it sit for a minute, let it go through that auto zero period. So if you're using this, you wouldn't want to use it in the mechanical room or in the space that you were trying to locate that leak. You'd want to step outside let it zero to fresh air that has no no gases that you're trying to locate so that it's able to auto sensor or uh, auto zero out and then so it doesn't actually display a part per million or anything like that it's got these led indicators that as it starts to rise up you're getting closer to the leak and going through the manual reading how you're supposed to use this tool you go out use the auto zero and then as you're sniffing along your piping, as it starts to get stronger and stronger, you keep moving towards, towards your leak, this will start zeroing out to uh, be accustomed to that level of the refrigerant or the combustion gas that you're, that you're trying to locate. And then as you progress forward, it'll either show you that the strength is increasing or decreasing. So the problem with this is, it seems to be pretty erratic, even just moving the wand around. I'm not sure what what it is in there. <laughs> when you move the wand around, it gives you some false readings. Um, if there's any air movement over the nozzle, it seems to give it false readings. So any wind or anything like that seems to set this thing off. So if you're up on a rooftop looking at some piece of equipment, uh, a, I've had a, a gust of wind go by and then it, it'll start putting you in the right wrong direction, making you think that that you're getting a leak. So like right now, I don't even know what it's what it's going off of. There's, there's, there's not even refrigerant in this room. So, like I said, this thing's been really unreliable for refrigerants, but it's been all right for combustion gases. And I have found a few uh, small leaks 
on on non on natural gas lines. I've I've only used it on natural gas. I've not used it on propane or anything like that. So I can't say whether it works well there, but overall as a refrigerant leak detector, this is not the one that I would spend my money on. I've actually switched to an Inficon. We've been using that for a while and that one's been great. So I've had the Inficon electronic leak detector with this one next to each other, both nozzles in the same spot where I had located a leak on an evaporator coil and this one was unable to pick it up, whereas the Inficon was. I've actually used one of Inficon's ultrasonic leak detectors as well, and I've had much better luck locating le small pinhole leaks with, with the ultrasonic leak detector versus this. So I'll try and maybe put up another comparison video of, of these two side by side on a refrigerant leak sometime in the future. But I just wanted to throw that out there for anyone that's looking. This seems to get hit or miss reviews on places that I've looked, but for me, I wouldn't recommend anyone purchasing this one for, for, I wouldn't recommend anyone purchasing this for a refrigerant leak detector. So, I mean, you can see moving it, moving it around, it just, I don't know what it is with it, but I would pass on this one. Let me know what your experience has been with it, with the informant too. Initially, I thought maybe I just got a bad one, but this has kind of been the common theme that I've seen with, with other techs that I've talked to. And we've, we've all had the kind of same experience with the informant. So, well, there you have it guys. There are my thoughts on the informant too. Like I said, would not recommend this one. So hopefully that'll be helpful to someone. Let me know what you use for an electronic leak detector. Let me know what one you recommend, or if you don't even recommend using an electronic leak detector. I'm so accustomed to not using one now. I, I mostly just rely on pressure and, and bubbles, but on a really large built up system, sometimes you could go through a lot of nitrogen and a lot of soap bubbles if you don't have an electronic leak detector. So it's always a nice tool to have to be able to use the technology that's available to you. Well, as always guys, thanks for checking out the video. 